Namaste and welcome to hopefully a short video on Brahmari Pranayama. That translates to hummingbee breath. I occasionally call it bumblebee breath but it kind of has the same effect. I wanted to put this video together for one of my yoga classes. Um, they often show interest in different breathing techniques and find they're very useful for helping them to calm down pre-meditation. So I started investigating Brahma Rebreath to try and find how it works and found different variations, different options. Um, so I wanted to go through with you and just explain to you the differences and the things that you can do, including understanding the anatomy and physiology of the movements. So first of all, I'd like to get you into a position that works for you. So you can sit. Um, you can sit cross-legged, you can't see my feet, but I am sitting cross-legged. Um, you could sit on a chair, you could sit on the edge of the bed. You need to line up your root chakra and your crown chakra and all the chakras in between. So all seven chakras need to be nice and lined so your back's nice and straight. If you feel like you're curving over, you really need to take control of the abdominal muscles to sit you nice and upright. So as I said, you can sit in a chair. Um, if you sit on the sofa and you find that the sofa is too long for you and you can't get your legs to the floor, it would benefit you that your feet were on the floor if you were sitting on a chair. I'm sitting on a meditation cushion, so I'm slightly raised off the floor and that works for me. So any variety, sitting in a chair, just as long as you feel nice and upright, you can lean against the chair if you want, but equally um, lengthening your body and strengthening your abdominal muscles is good if you sit nice and upright. So as I said, there's lots of different variations of uh, Brahmari breathing, Brahmari Pranayama. There's lots of different types. So I'm going to start you off with a really easy version just to show you what you can and can't do. So. It's about adding a noise or a resonance to your exhale. So you inhale normally and you exhale, adding in a kind of hum to your voice. So like you would um, sing a tune, you're just adding a hum to your voice. So how you would make the noise hmm. What you need to do is keep your lips together and your teeth separate. You want your tongue away from your teeth just in case you do have a reaction um, and you, you don't want to bite your tongue. So we're going to start off by inhaling normally and then as you exhale you're adding the little noise to your throat. And it's that noise that we're looking for. It can be louder, it can be quieter, it's just up to you and how you feel. Some people find this quite a self-conscious move to do and don't like to do it around others. It's again up to you. You can take yourself off into a quiet room and do this for yourself. Or you can join it and do it part, as part of a yoga class. So what I'm going to do is just show you five inhales and five exhales. And you can continue to extend the length of your exhale if you start to get a little bit more confident. So I'm just going to do five, but you can close your eyes or open your eyes, it's up to you. So here we go. Mm So I could feel that vibrating right down in my tummy, all the way up into my sinuses. And the one thing I did, which is I, what I advised you not to do, is have your teeth together. Because actually with your teeth together, you vibrate the enamel, so you can feel the teeth chiming on each other. So it is a really good idea to just separate the teeth so you don't get that little jarring noise going on in your mouth. 
Um, you can, so how, how often do you do this? You can do um, as many times as you want. So daily practice is good. Um, if you want to practice this for a long time, you can. I've seen di different videos saying different amounts. Some people say five times, some say 10. Another video said up to 10 minutes. So it's your choice and how you feel comfortable and how you want to do it. You just need to be aware of your environment when you're doing it. So um, sitting quietly in the lounge, the dining room. Um, I actually sat in my car, sitting on the driveway and did it in my car before I started my car. And that was quite nice. So that was quite therapeutic. But um, obviously not whilst I'm driving. So there is a more complex version, but what I'd like to do first is talk to you about some of the benefits of this particular breathing. So the, all of these benefits have come from different videos I've found online and I've actually found some really interesting information. So the benefits state, and I'm just reading off a bit of paper, um, increases concentration and memory. It relieves hypertension or high blood pressure lowers stress, anxiety and anger. It can help to reduce migraines. Soothes the nervous system, so it gets your parasympathetic nervous system, your rest and digest system activated. Um, it can give you relief if you're feeling hot. So if you're a lady of a certain age and you do get um, hot flushes, or they're called hot flashes in the USA, so if you do get them, um, you could sit down and just do a few breathe breaths to make it feel better for you. I am of a certain age and I had one earlier and I sat down and did this and it actually felt quite cooling. It did actually help bring me out of it quite quickly. Um, it releases nitric oxide which is also known as the panacea molecule. I'll tell you a little bit about that in a minute. Um, it builds confidence. It can help to lower your BMI. And um, if you suffer with congested sinuses around here, um, it can help to um, remove the congestion that you get in your lymph because the vibration is good to help release. Um, it also um, is linked, if you have congestion in this area, it's also linked to um, mental and emotional trauma. Okay, so that's the benefit. I mentioned something called the panacea molecule. And from the videos I've been watching, um, I found a video from a company called lifespile.com, John Dillard. He talks about the Nobel Peace Prize given for science in 1998 for the panacea molecule, um, nitric oxide. So this particular breathing technique of Brahmari Pranayama actually releases nitric oxide. Before I bore you with nitric oxide, it also um, releases gamma waves as well. So I'll tell you a little bit about both nitric oxide and gamma waves after we've done another session. So the slightly more um, complex version of Brahmari is to add Pratyahara to it, which is actually to remove and withdraw some of the senses so that you go inwards. So for me, sitting on the floor or sitting on a bed where I can put my feet up into the same level as my bottom or similar, I am sitting on a cushion so my feet are slightly lower. I'm then going to put my elbows onto my knees and that's just there to help support the upper part of my body because if you were to do this for 10 minutes with your arms free, you probably would find that your arms and shoulders would ache a little bit. I don't know who you are and you could have situations with your shoulders. So it's really good to, that you rest your elbows onto your knees. So the first part of the movement is to withdraw your sound. So what you do is take the little tiny piece of the ear and you push in with your thumb and it, depending on the push, don't, not hard, but a soft push won't block all of your hearing out, but a, a slightly um, firmer push but not too firm will block all your hearing out so you can block all the sounds going on around you. The next thing to do, you do both ears by the way, the next thing to do is to cover your eyes and close your eyes so you're using your palms to cover your eyes. Just make sure that the nose is free and that you can't really see any light coming in but if you've got your eyes shut as well um, that's a withdrawal of senses. So we're going to do both of those hand movements with 
the breathing. Inhaling and exhaling through your nose, not your mouth. Um, and you want to add on your exhale the same breathing that we did at the beginning. So you're just trying to make some resonance or vibration through your throat by adding a little bit of sound from your voice box. So I'm just going to do a couple to show you. time you might want to keep your eyes shut after you take your hands off just so that the bright light from your room doesn't uh, make you squint. <clears throat> so that is um, the slightly more complex version of it. You are practicing Pratyahara which is the withdrawal of your senses um, and you're also practicing the resonance and that resonance that you're uh, creating within your body you can feel it all the way down to your tummy all the way up to your head. That resonance or vibration is humming the breath. So let's talk about nitric oxide and gamma waves. So nitric oxide is the panacea molecule that was studied for the Nobel Peace Prize and it basically stores in your sinuses and your nasal passages and gets released when you breathe. It's Release quite gently when you breathe, but only release through your nose because it's in the sinus and nasal passage area. If you breathe through your mouth, you won't release any nitric oxide. Nitric oxide, so I'm just going to read from my little sheet here. So nitric oxide lays dormant in the nasal passages and in the sinuses, but it helps the body to repair itself. You do not create nitric oxide if you breathe through the mouth. This breathing technique of Brahmari Pranayama can release up to 15 times more nitric oxide than normal breathing can. So both are beneficial, but to boost your nitric oxide is amazingly beneficial for your body because it restores the health and elasticity of your arterial skin. It boosts mitochondrial energy. So the mitochondria are the energy houses in your cells. You could have multiple um, mitochondria in every cell in the body. So you've got rather a lot of them. Um, so therefore if you're increasing their energy, you're ultimately increasing the energy of your body and you. It increases blood flow. It improves the viscosity of the blood, so the thickness or thinness of your blood. It increases your sensitivity to insulin. It supports healthy blood pressure and lowers it and it increases peristalsis. So peristalsis is the movement of the muscles in your intestines. So if you had a pipe, it, they kind of move like this. So it pushes um, all the food all around your intestines and ultimately helps you eliminate it better. It also increases the antioxidants, or the production of antioxidants, such as superoxides, dismutase, and also glutathione. These are antioxidants that clean and scrub your liver um, and help to release and reduce and remove the toxins and chemicals from your liver. So making your liver much more effective. So that's nitric oxide. It also um, helps to um, produce gamma waves. So gamma waves are activated for um, approximately 10 minutes after this particular exercise. Um, they clean out plaque from the brain and boost your mental cognitive function. Research shows that it can reduce Alzheimer's. This is a quote from uh, the Lifespan website that I've quoted earlier. So um, I believe that they have done the investigation on that. High frequency gamma rays modulate perception and can make us more self-aware. They have spiritual and emotional benefits. And if you are into Ayurveda, it quotes, um, it lets the truth out of you. So if you're somebody who keeps the um, keeps everything close to your chest, it can help you uh, release the truth. 
So I hope that explains it to you. You can also do um, Brahmari Pranayama by doing Ujjayi breath as well. And on a couple of the videos I saw, comments were, what's Ujjayi breath? So I thought I'd give you a little bit of um, feedback on that. Ujjayi breath is also known as um, Darth Vader breath. So it's basically trying to make a noise with your throat by constricting your throat as you inhale and exhale. It's more of a noise that you can hear on the exhale. So I'm going to inhale normally and then exhale with Ujjayi breath. So I'm just kind of trying to squeeze here internally with my um, the muscles around my throat to make that noise. You can do Ujjayi breath on inhale and exhale, but I just wanted to show you. So you can do pranayama breathing by kind of compressing the throat on the inhale and exhale, as well as doing the humming. Um, works, it's up to you how you do it. I'm now gonna show you um, a couple more versions to help you along. Um, and be aware that depending on how long you do it for, whether you hold your arms up, whether you rest them on your knees, it's entirely up to you, just how you feel comfortable. Also note that when I do the easy version, my exhale isn't as long as my inhale. So I think by doing the Pratyahara, the withdrawal of senses, and this is only my opinion, because that's what I've noticed, but by covering my ears and my eyes, I believe that I'm able to hold my exhale longer. Just putting that out there. So I'm just gonna do a few breaths just to show you. So I hope my video on humming bee breath has been informative. Uh, please subscribe to my channel or um, do the thumbs up if you like the video. Any comments appreciated. It's always good to help us learn what we can put on as videos next time round. So I wish you an amazing day, an amazing evening. Om Shanti. Namaste.